In this video, I'll show you how to use Lightroom retouching tools for simple, straightforward tasks such as removing blemishes and softening skin. I'll take you through what I find is a very typical procedure for me for improving a portrait like the one you see here. So I'm in the Lightroom Develop module. I'm going to give myself a little more workspace by hiding the module picker on the top and the film strip on the bottom. Okay, so let's go over some of the things I'm going to do to this uh, portrait. Um, I can see right away there's some blemishes here I want to remove. So I'm going to use Lightroom Spot Removal tools to get rid of the blemishes. I'm going to go through with the adjustment brush and selectively soften some of the skin. I'm also going to use the adjustment brush to brighten her uh, the iris and to whiten the white part of her eyes to add a little more saturation to her lips, and then I'm going to give her hair some highlights. I'll finish up by cropping the image and then giving it a vignette. Okay, let's get started. So I'm going to enlarge the image by clicking on it, and I'm going to come over here to the tool strip underneath the histogram, and I'm going to select the spot removal tool. And you can see we have a choice of either clone or heal. Now, for this kind of work, I almost always use Heal. So I'm going to select Heal now, but I'll show you the difference. So I'm going to bring my brush over to the spot that I want to remove, or Heal, and I'm going to position it over it. And I can um, change the size of the circle either with my mouse wheel over here or over here with the slider. Now, with Lightroom 5, you can also click and drag and create an irregular shape um, this is new to Lightroom 5, but we don't need to do that. I'm going to use the round circle, so I'm going to hit the delete key and get rid of that. So I'm going to slightly enlarge the circle, position it right over the blemish, right over the spot, and click. So you can see Lightroom does a really good job of finding a source to fill in uh, the target. Now, I promised you that I would show you the difference between clone and heal. I can toggle back and forth so you can see the difference. I can either come over here and select Clone, or I can just right-click and select Clone here. So you can see that cloning uh, is actually bringing over uh, the pixels from the source to the target uh, and not doing much blending. It does a little blending around the edges. But with the Heal, let me go back and select Heal, Heal is blending the whole uh, range of uh, the luminosity, the color, and the pixels. And it's much more natural looking. So that's uh, what I'm going to choose to use here is the Heal option in the uh, Spot Removal tool. And I can come through here and I can position my cursor. I'm changing the size with the mouse wheel again. And I can quickly go through and get rid of some of these blemishes. Doesn't have to be perfect, but it does clean it up a little bit and makes it look nicer. Uh, and if I hold the space bar, I can drag around and see if there's other ones that I want to remove. There's one there, and so forth. Now, up in here, I'm going to leave this alone because when I soften her skin, that'll take care of those little blemishes. This one I can get rid of easy enough. Okay, so I'm just going to go around. There's another one. Another. These will, again, go away when I soften her skin uh, with the adjustment brush. Okay, so that's good. So um, a couple things about the, the spot removal tool. If you don't like what um, Lightroom has chosen as a, uh, a source for the target, in other words, if you don't think it's doing a good job, you can actually right-click and have it select a new source, and maybe that will work better, or you can manually click and move uh, around like this until you get it just where you want it. I just find Lightroom does a good job of uh, finding a, uh, a good source to, to blend uh, or heal the target. So once I'm done with this, I'm going to select now or deselect the spot removal tool. And I'm using the space bar and moving around. Let me go back down to the fill view. You can see where I am up here in the navigator and position her face. Okay, so now I'm going to select the adjustment brush, which is over here underneath the histogram. Click on it, and now we have the powerful adjustment brush ready to go. 
So over here with the adjustment brush, we have lots of control. I'm going to use one of the um, presets, the Soften Skin preset. Select it there. And you can see that it's moved the clarity slider all the way to the left, uh, going into the negative clarity, which will, will soften uh, or kind of diffuse uh, the area that I uh, paint over. And it's slightly added some sharpness. And now I'm going to bring my brush over to her face. I can adjust the size of the brush by the mouse wheel. And also my brush controls are down here. And you can see you can change the size, the feathering, uh, and the flow. I'm just going to keep this um, feathering and flow where it's set right now at 100 each. Uh, I'm going to keep auto mask off. I'm not going to have it auto mask because this area here that I'm painting over is pretty straightforward. I don't, I'm not going to worry about um, getting into the tiny details. It's going to be pretty broad stroked. So I'm going to go ahead and click and drag. I have a very big brush right now. I will change the size after a bit. I'm just going to get the kind of the major skin areas painted in. Now I can see right away that it's softening the skin, but if I want to see better what I'm doing, I'm going to hit the O key and this is now giving me the mask and showing me where I've painted. Now I've changed the size of the brush with the mouse wheel. So as I go in here, I don't want to soften up, for example, the hair, but just the skin. And I certainly don't want to soften the eye. So I'm just going to go around. And it doesn't have to, I don't have to be precise because I can always come in later and uh, clean it up a little bit if I need to. There we go. And let's get down in here. Okay, now I've got some of the hair that I don't want. So I'm going to hold down the Option or Alt key. And let me go back and remove the softening effect there. And I'm also going to come back up here and remove some of that softening of the hair because I don't want the hair to be soft. And let's get this a little smaller and fiddle in here and come in here. Okay, nice. Okay, so I'm going to hit the O key again, uh, which removes the mask, uh, and you can see uh, the effect. Uh, if I don't like the effect, if I think it's too soft, I can come over and move the clarity slider and make it a little less extreme, which I'll do right there. Okay, so that's, that's the skin. It softened up the skin nicely. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is work on the, the eyes. So in order to do that, I have to create uh, a new point. I don't want to uh, work with the same mask. I'm going to create a new one by selecting New. And I'm going to come over here to the effects, and I'm going to select Iris Enhance. Let me go into one-to-one -one view, and so we can see better by using the space bar and clicking and dragging around. So I'll enlarge the brush a little bit, and I'll click and drag all around the iris. And you can see how that's really bringing out the color. It's very nice. And I'll come over here and do the same thing. OK. And how it's doing it, if you look over here, it's basically just um, adding saturation. You can see by the slider what it's doing. All right, so that's the, the eye treatment. I'm going to finish up by whitening up the uh, the white in her eyes. And in order to do that, I need to create another new mask. So I'll select New. And this time I'm going to select Exposure and slightly increase the exposure, come through here, and just lighten up the white of the eye just a little bit. Doesn't take a lot. OK, one more thing I want to do is I want to increase the saturation in her lips. And to do that, select New. And I'm going to go ahead and choose Saturation. And go ahead and saturate the lips just a little bit. Again, you don't want to overdo any of this. Let's go back down to Fill so we can see how it's looking. Very good. OK, now one last thing. And that's uh, some hair treatment. And I'm going to create a new mask there. And this time I'm going to work with the clarity, and I'm going to bump up the slider in clarity. I'm going to go uh, to the positive values rather than negative values. And let's say 
start off at 73. And I'm just going to paint in some highlights. I'm just clicking and dragging uh, on some of the parts of the hair. Very doesn't have to be, um, you don't have to do much of this, but just even a little bit of highlights is nice. And I can adjust this later if I want more clarity or less clarity. OK, so I think I'm pretty much finished with the adjustment brush. Now I'm going to go ahead and select it, which deselects it. Uh, the next thing I need to do to finish this up is crop it. So let me select Fit, select the Crop Overlay tool, and I'm going to crop it like this. Just make a better composition. Position her there. Okay, a little bit more there. Okay, and then I'm going to hit the Return or Enter key. And one more thing to do is under Effects, I'm going to just give it a slight post crop vignetting. Not too much, just a little bit. So that really brings even more focus into her face. So that, uh, I think that's looking pretty good. Let me show you a side by side comparison before and after. I can see a pretty nice improvement there. And it was actually really quick. This is something you could do very fast. Uh, you could take a little more time and be more precise with your brush strokes, of course. That's always something you can do. But you can also do it very quickly. And with very little work, you can make a portrait really, really look so much better.